Hey everyone, it's Armor Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Legends. Welcome to an exclusive first look at the brand new monster, Rotten. This is the monster that's going to be available in the upcoming maze event. So I hope this video can help you figure out whether or not you want to invest in this monster. Personally, I think it's good to get every single monster that is released. And look at that baby form. It is adorable. There's a little baby ghost Kadama going through that little opening of the monster Rotten. And he looks completely mystified by why that ghost is there. Anyways, I want to give a huge shout out, huge thanks to Social Point for giving me this monster, for giving me all the cells I need to take this monster to rank 5. They provided the food and they will reimburse me with any gems I use for the purpose of showcasing this monster. Now we have a bunch of Godamas and here is the alt. Alright, let's start by looking at stats. His power is 73 and 92, that's one of the lowest of the Cosmics, and his life stat is 74, 796, that's actually the higher end for the Cosmics. It's like the second highest stat. If we just scroll through some of the Cosmics, you can see you don't really see 74k much. Currently, 77k is the highest with these two monsters right here. We have Hardy and Bomb Beta with the highest life stat, and then here we have Slugazoid, equal life stat to that of our new monster, Rotten. What's most impressive about this monster is maybe also notice the speed stat. 5918. This is a super, super fast monster. I know he doesn't look like it, but he's the third fastest monster in the game. The only monsters faster are Ignis and Slugazoid. And Ignis is a support monster that can remove positive effects from his team or the enemy team. Slugazoid is a stamina drain monster with a 50% chance of freeze skill, so not even guaranteed freeze. So Slugazoid is interesting in that he is the fastest. I want to call him anti-meta, but I don't know if that's an accurate terminology. So we'll talk about that when we talk about the skills. Let's look at traits real quick. He's immune to freeze, which, like I mentioned, Slugazoid currently is the only cosmic that can freeze, and it's a 50% chance to freeze skill. And then in the mythic monsters, the non-cosmics, you have Abysmus, who was behind a paywall and has an AoE freeze and single freeze, but to my knowledge, he's the only monster that freezes. So right now, as of time recording this video, the immunity to freeze trait isn't that powerful but in the future if monsters get released that can freeze and i imagine they will um it'll become more valuable immune to ignite and burn i would have rather had a hardened or immune to torture this protects you against specifically more, more likely the fire monsters that tend to have ignite and burn but i guess it does protect you from the stronger dots i mean curse would have also been nice but yeah i'm not a biggest fan of the rank one and then rank three is super nice damage protection you've seen this on Urder. Basically, you block 50% of incoming damage, so in order for this monster to get killed, you need to deal double the damage you normally would have. For example, if this monster has 10 HP, and you were to deal 10 damage, the monster would die. You you add in damage protection, and now you're only dealing 5 damage. So you would need to dish out an attack that deals 20 damage. So the damage protection is a super nice trait, um, worth getting to rank 3 just to increase survivability. Again, he's already one of the tankiest monsters in the game, with that 74k starting life stats, and then you add in that damage protection... It's basically like his life stat is 150k, so that's that's pretty awesome. So with that being said, let's level up this monster and look at his skills. Let's see what he has to offer. So once again, for anyone wondering, how am I able to just click and hold and feed the monster without skills popping up, without having to get annoyed and cancel the skills every single time, there is an option in the in, on the game. In the top right-hand corner on the gears icon, there's an option where you can cancel the move pop-ups. So I would recommend you click on that if you want to just be able to feed all the way from 0 to 100 super easily. So that being said, here we have our monster, and now let's look at skills. So we have Life Collector, 22 stamina, 0 cooldown, no need to run that. Never enough, removes all negative effects from all allies. You have a cleansing skill on a one turn cooldown. Move over, Ignis. So this is pretty nice, right? Any Anytime your monster can cleanse negative effects from your team, I think that's really awesome. I think it's super helpful, especially from a supportive monster who, who isn't really there to deal with attacks. Coffin not locked blocks out 50% of damage received, heals itself by 50%. So, again, that increased sustainability, I, although I don't think you might need that because we have a better skill set. Plague Spreader deals low earth damage and applies Nightmares to all enemies. So, I don't really see a purpose for this. Nightmares isn't the most powerful. It does remove 10% of stamina, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Although, all those skills do have a low cooldown. One turn cooldown, two turn, one turn. All right, let's move on. Ah, there we go. L5 resurrects one ally with 100% life. That is awesome. You think of Miserus's Elf Zero, which resurrects and gives evasion. Well, this is 100% life resurrection on a 53 stamina 3 turn cooldown. Let's see what else we have. Little Succubus removes positive effect from one enemy, deals heavy earth damage, applies nightmares. I like this for the positive effect removal. Actually, I think a lot of players are comparing this monster to Lonrad, which to me does make sense because they both have resurrection skills. They both have, um, Lonrad has, I think it's called like Little Shot or Loopy Shot, which removes positive effects from the enemy. So it's nice to have a skill that can designate a target and remove an effect. Once again, this is the third fastest monster in the game. If you're fighting a Vanos 29, 
hey, you can get rid of that Pierce if you go first and there's no Megaton monster. If there's a Megaton monster, you can get rid of that Megatons. So this monster can cleanse from your team and remove a positive effect from a single enemy monster. That's pretty useful right now. All right, we have Plague Spitter deals lower damage, plays Nightmare. So we talked about that one. Soul of the Apprentices. This one is interesting. You resurrect an ally with 1% life, but then you give yourself Sunburn, but then you get an extra turn. So th this skill is interesting because is it worth running? I'm not a big fan of it, but if you're the last monster alive, and thanks to your high life stat and your damage protection, you might be the last monster alive, there are arguments to maybe using Rotten and using this skill to resurrect one of your allies, and then you use your 5 skill, you know, back to back, and then you resurrect both of your allies, one is going to have 1% life, and the other one is going to have full life, and then you're going to be sunburned, that's the bad thing about it. So you're vulnerable, your ally's vulnerable, if there's an enemy anticipation monster, reviving with the extra turn skills, the worst thing you can do, they're probably going to kill the monster you just resurrect, but I mean, maybe you revive a, I don't know, let's say you revive um, Soul of the Apprentice, I, I guess if we were still using legendaries, you could revive a worm lad, so worm lad is resurrected, and then with the extra turn, you revive your top monster, your Erder, and now that worm lad, even though he has 1% life, thanks to dodge area, can't get attacked, so maybe in that situation it could work, although rotten, Erder... Worm that is that a good team? That's a whole different story. So I'm a little iffy. I don't know how I feel about Soul of the Apprentice. Also, what I don't like about about revival skills that don't grant an immediate extra turn or evasion is that I do not know how the turn order is affected. So the worst thing that could happen is I revive a monster, I revive another monster, and then the turn order just flops on me to where the enemy gets all their turns in and I don't get a turn in, then my monsters die. So I, I am not a fan of Soul of the Apprentice. I think you only need one resurrection skill on this monster that one and then you want mud realm and we replace that and in my personal opinion this is the best skill set and it is a really good skill set when you look at what this monster can do he basically can do everything a support monster needs to do you can remove positive effect from a single enemy monster you have a resurrection skill that's that's extra normally support monsters don't resurrect you have a skill to remove negative effects from your team on a one turn cooldown i really like that and then you have mud realm which blocks out 50 percent of incoming damage for all of your allies which is this is essentially like saying all of my allies now have double hp without the negative effects because if you get hit with the torture even that is cut in half and you apply immunity to control and life regen so not only do you have damage protection you're going to recover 20 percent of life each turn for the next three turns and then you are immune to stun, possession, freeze, and corruption. So this is the reason I said this monster is anti-meta. Technically, this monster could go first in the turn order, right? Because he's the third fastest monster in the game. He can activate Mud Realm, and your monsters cannot get hit with control skills. The thing is, though, the meta right now doesn't focus on AoE possession, AoE freeze, AoE stun. I would say right now the meta focuses on cooldown activation. You know, Saiyamaeus, Kodama even. So they go first, they activate cooldowns, and they shut you down. But if the game was to shift to a monster with AoE Freeze comes along, a monster with AoE Stun or a monster with AoE Possession, and they dominate. I mean, Black Feather got released. He relies on Possession. So maybe he's anti-Black Feather right now. He's faster than Black Feather by a few points. So given the same levels and everything, you can go first, give your team immune to control. Deny monsters typically do not remove positive effects and then deny. Maybe one of them will one time have a removes positive effects from a single enemy extra turn scale, but they do not do AoE Cleanse and then AoE Deny. So this monster, the way I see it, you can run him 3 speed as anti-meta. Not really anti-meta, anti-stun, freeze, possession, anti-control. Do mud around at the start of the battle. You protect the you protect in terms of damage output and you protect them from being immune to control and you're good to go. Another way this monster is going to be ran is if a, if a very meta freeze monster does come along, then yeah, you have this monster with speed runes and then he can't get frozen. So your allies, even if they get frozen, stunned, whatever... You do never enough to cleanse, or you do Mud Realm to cleanse, and then you guarantee your monster to turn in. So yeah, he's anti-freeze for sure because of his traits, and he's anti-control if there is a meta control monster. Right now, the meta is also like um, just two attackers and a Daedalus, or a Bombeta, or Bombeta Resurrection Monster attacker. So it's not so heavily focused on denial just because the rise of the Megatop monsters. But yeah, that's interesting. So you could run him 3 speed. Um, I think typically the way you're going to see him though is as a team speed holder. So I would say, ooh, let's give him level 10s. What am I thinking? Let's give him level 10 runes. I think you're going to see him a lot as a team speed holder. You could give him one life. You could give him one single speed so he's not too slow. But I think team speed is primarily what you're going to see him as. Um, for now, give him a life just so we can see that life stat be super high. Um, but yeah, he, he he's basically that. Um, in terms of relics, he can hold double trap relic. Wow. So I don't have all of them, but if we just look at the diamonds, I mean, if you have gold, Oblation Trap is the way to go, right? I'm probably going to run that right now, but we also have access to, um, I don't have it. Where is it? This one, Nebulon's Trap. It's a better Oblation Trap. After being damaged, 
If Warrior's life is below 50%, removes a ton of stamina from the enemy if that's fully maxed out. Um, so you can do that. You can do, I guess you can do even Lamance's Claw Trap. You'd have basically four uses. If you have two of them, you can deal 24, 48k damage and remove stamina from whoever's attacking you. I mean, once you get attacked and one triggers, the, they both will trigger. So that's kind of the downside-ish. But, I mean, with monsters having so much stamina, if I do double ablation, it's a way to do 100% stamina drain. So if he gets attacked, it's almost like 100% stamina drain. That's kind of cool. So we're, we're going to double oblation because that's all I have access to. And because I'm in a high league, I'm not going to showcase this monster at 100 or low levels. I'm just going to max them out because I am taking out maxed out monsters. But you should know that in terms of just skill set, it's fine. His trait doesn't offer anything much except that rank 3 where it's just harder for him to die. So again, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to bother showing him at 100, 130. We're just going to max him out all the way. All right, so here he is fully maxed out. He is level 150. We're going to increase him all the way, feed him 50. And you can see how much food is used. Maybe if it goes down 1.03 billion, maybe. And nope, I stayed at the full food. All right, so, oh, the ultimate, by the way, I didn't even talk about his ultimate. I remember it not being too fancy. Deals moderate special damage, applies Nightmare and Sunburn. Yeah, he's not a strong monster, so the Nightmare and Sunburn really, it, that's probably the best thing, but it's not even that, that great. All right, with that being said, let's see how well this monster does. Also, this monster and Kodama together, I would say, can make a pretty good combo. Because Kodama can do the cooldown activation, and then Kodama can block enemy resurrection. You can resurrect if you need to, and then Kodama can also give your team immunity to torture. And so this monster not being susceptible, this monster being pretty susceptible to torture, having having a high life stat, you know, yes, he has immunity to the, to the ignite and to the burning. They could make a really great combo together. So with that being said, I want to try something a little interesting, unique. I want to do two attackers or sorry, one attacker, two resurrect monsters, just to see how that plays out. So we're going to click fight, and we're, we're going to see how this battle goes. I am allowed to do PP, however, I am not allowed to win the battles, because that would be totally unfair for me to win with monsters, with a monster that has not yet been released, and that was given to me for a review. Um, So this one is a little straightforward. Here, I would just buff Armorclaw, and Armorclaw would win. Um, I don't want to do that right away. So we're just going to recharge with Miserus. All right, let's see. There's that Mud Realm. There's never enough to cleanse if I needed to. Little Succubus. And let's see. Resurrects one ally. You know what I'm wondering? How is he so fast? Oh, yeah, because I'm team speed. Duh. All right. Little Succubus deals heavy earth damage. Applies Nightmare Zoom's positive effects. Um, so if I wanted to reflect that, you know what? We're just going to see how this goes. I'm going to go with the Mud Realm skill. And let's... What do you have? Oh, he doesn't have Revival. Let's actually hurt Gracon. And let's see how this plays out. All right. So Babari and... Ragnarok. I was hoping to not fight legendaries. All right, let's see. Blessing. So here you just see the life, the the damage output being cut in half. Um, summon Thorder. This is actually not a good battle whatsoever. So here, let's go on to the next one. And I dropped some trophies. That's fine. Let's try this again. Currently, yes. Let's go. All right, where are the Vanosses? One fifties. There we go. Deadly Justice League fight. All right, so here is going to be a good showcase. So Sun Protection, Lonrad versus Rotten. All right, let's see. Okay, AoE days all across the board. Laser Beam Sword kicks in. Kane Sword, ouch. Miserus almost died. That would have been nice. I could have resurrected him with a better version of his skill. All right, um, in this case, I would buff my attacker. Let's go, Omega. And then I would probably, let's see. Do I have, um, I have Anticipation, Damage Protection, Days. All right. Um, little succubus is probably the best way to go getting rid of that megaton right off the bat boom all right cool and then i am free to attack and kill the attacker vastas is dead all right let's see crafted from the sand all right that's fine Eotron's mask kicks in he's probably gonna res let's see if he does all right that is the the team revival so no immediate extra turn so see i'm not a i'm not a big fan of it um, i can get attack i can heal let's go for a heal all right so now i want to do um, probably mud to block the incoming damage because again this monster has a single cleanse but they don't have cleansing so i know my monster is going to be protected um i can keep punking on vastas and i think we will so sorry vastas you are dead so there's some sunburn there here let's speed this up recharge there's that see that removed my positive effects that's fine um here let's go after daedalus attack him with that um five never enough so at this point i just really have a team skill i again one chunk cooldown is nice so i'll use it just so you can see that it'll come back right away um we'll do remember to sub he dies with dots um well wait see that's the cleansing skill on non red we're just going to be recharging oh i got my alt which doesn't do much here is removing of the life regen and do you have revival yes you do okay so we're just going to recharge we'll wait for him to do the team revival skill if he does 
We'll just keep recharging. All right, see, I got my Never Enough skill again. And then shot. All right, if he's not afraid to recharge, can you recharge, please? Or not recharge, can you resurrect? Why is he not resurrecting? Is he afraid of my Kodama babies? Does he think he can't? All right, so we are good to go. Um, just for fun, let me buff you. Um, Shining Darkness for fun, Nightmares. See, it's, it doesn't do much. It's just a dot skill at the end of the day. And then this finishes them off, essentially. Boom, and then Lonrad comes back. Yeah, the cool thing about Lonrad is being able to hold Revival Relics. So that's one huge advantage he has. What's it out of there? I think this was a good showcase. And I did it using two Resurrect Monsters and an Attacker. Super interesting team setup. Uh, I actually didn't think it would work. It really depends if the enemy has a Denier or not. So let's do another one. And again, 150s. All right, let's do this. What the heck? Is everyone an Attacker? We have a Strength Rune. We have two Strength Runes. We have another Strength Rune. My goodness. All right. See, this is a good showcase where... If I went first with my monster, I could have done Mud Realm and protected my monsters. Now I am susceptible, so we'll see how this plays out. So fortunately, he tried to Mega Stun my armor, which is dumb. Um, he can he can hit me with a lot of dots. Um, so I'm and he has a lot of strength, so I'm gonna block 50% of the damage output. So the enemy isn't gonna be able to do too much. Muchi, I hope you have Resurrection Relic because you're about to get wrecked. Save Rossi God. Morgz armor kicks in. That was cut in half. Okay, okay, let's see the damage output. Noxious Slime. So keep in mind, that would have been doubled if not for the damage protection. Blaze Rain, that would have been doubled if not for the damage protection as well. Um, let's go for a heal. All right, awesome. Um, maybe Mud Realm would have been the... Okay, Light Weakness. All right, check this out. I have, right now, Physical Weakness, Poison, Burning, Light Weakness. I have Light Weakness, Physical, Sunburn, Poison, and Armor Claw, same thing. Light, Physical, Sunburn, Burning, Poison. So, never enough. And great support, just cleansing everything. Monsters are good to go. I can hit another AoE skill. Boom! So the damage protection helped me not take as much damage. And then the support on my monsters just helped me cleanse. It's awesome. Let's get rid of those, um, what was it? Possession Hater, Dark Hater, whatever you had. We'll attack you, sleep under the moonlight. And I think at this point, no reason to continue. Oh, he does have Revival. Um, so if I could, I could finish him off. He'd come back. Armor, I'm afraid. Well, no, he's fine, but we'll end it there. So as you can see, very interesting. I'm running Double Resurrection. Um, with my monster being more support and I was actually able to come out ahead. So that was cool. Um, I'm going to switch him to speed. I want to see if I can find a match where I can just Mud Realm right off the bat. Uh, maybe we won't do Armor Claw. Maybe we'll do a Nor. And we will do a, let's see, Speed Mud Realm. Um, we'll try this team out. I want to give team speed to Midzris. And then we'll do a couple other kinds of builds. Because realistically, I would probably just do like um, a Sigh of Miss with him. Honestly, if you can do like Bomb Beta... Bomb Beta, your monster... So, because Bomb Beta can also cleanse from your team. So, you'd have two monsters that can cleanse. Bomb Beta, Rotten, and another monster. An attacker or a denier. That would probably work out. Someone that can apply a lot of dots. Um, but let's try this real quick. I'm surprised this is working as well as it is. Especially against 130s. So, the, the goal here is I want to Mud Realm right off the bat. Let me just make him full speed. Have him go first. And he's going to get a lot of turns in. That's the only thing. So, we'll see. Click Fight. And I'm dropping... No! Wasn't I Legendary 2 when I started this? Ah oh, man, all right, that's fine. Ah no, all right, yes and yes. I think I'm getting attacked on defense and then all the losses right now. So not strong opponents, but I, I guess this is a good showcase. So imagine <laughs> my monster too fast. Imagine that that tremor was faster. If that was a 150 tremor, um, I would be faster. I would mud realm right off the bat. Again, that immunity to control. So then, when tremor does AOE stun, the basically see anti control in that case. So. He can work as a 3-speed holder like that, and then when I do get hit with Dalts, Vulnerable, and Poison, I can do Never Enough and just cleanse. And now my monsters are good to go. And then, in this case, I can, you know, um, in this case, I'm strong, so I have a, I have just the level advantage, so I can, like, pretty much OTK and whatnot. Um, here, buff my attacker. Um, here, we'll let you get an extra turn in. Let's see what you can do. Strike of the Iron Way, that's fine by me. I will just OTK you, and yeah, Tremor again. Um, see, he can stun, but I can be anti that. Um, no reason to continue that battle. All right, let's uh, do another one. I think I'm dropping too much to the point where the battles aren't going to be interesting. So let me just do a, a standard battle. So I would probably run um, right now, just because, like I keep mentioning, that the meta isn't really deny. I would probably run, like, Siamis to deny going first. Um, if I had Bomb Beta, I'd probably use Bomb Beta. Actually, no, I'd probably I'd end in an attacker. So I'd probably do something like this. I'd give him team speed. I think maybe even three team speed. It would depend on the situation. I like three team speed, one life. Just because it helps him stay alive. Um, 16,000 armor would be 10. So, yeah, I want to make sure that my 
I want to make sure that my Sai Miss is going first. I would probably give my attacker team speed in this case. I don't have it. So I'd probably give Armor Claw team speed. Just to help Sai Miss goes first. Um, him, I could give him team speed. I'd probably do a 6 team speed, honestly. If I had the level 10 runes team speed, you would see 2 team speed on... Yeah, you'd see you'd see team speed on Armor Claw. You'd do team speed on Rotten and Sai Miss would go first. And I think that's the strategy I would do. Now, let's see. If I, oh, there's Kodama. See, so... Cooldown activation is what I want to stop first. Um, Ignis went first. That's fine. Ignis can't really do much. Virtue and then activate cooldowns across the board. There we go. So Kodama, it's funny too because Kodama blocks resurrection. So if they're battling each other, um, Ryan can't resurrect. But I don't think I'll need to right now. Um, I have I have that vulnerable. I want to get rid of it. So I can do never enough. Or I can also do Mudder Realm to block incoming damage. But I'm going to do never enough because I don't want to take extra damage from... Um, what's his face? From Vanos if he attacks me. Um, I can OTK Kodama, yeah, with Bolt Strike. See, good thing I got rid of Vulnerable. That would have been 50% stronger. Um, let's take Control. Actually, I don't want to risk that. Let's just do Show Must Go On. Um, I'm afraid if I do the possession that Vanos attacks his team or something. Um, we'll do Mud Realm. So I block damage. I love this because it blocks damage and I heal. That is so awesome. And um, we're going to attack Ignis. Um, I actually, I really want, I think we can kill Ignis. I really want you to attack me so we'll do little succubus right here I, I just realized we haven't even had a chance to revive all right let's see bolt strike and see it's just that would have dealt 100k but thanks to my thanks to my uh, blocking it didn't so yeah it, it's great i mean overall i think the monster is really great i think um when you look at him on paper you might be like oh he's nothing too amazing but when you realize that he's super fast and he has a bunch of great support skills and because he's fast he can get turns in um i think i think he's really great so i i am liking the monster a lot I think the biggest issue is he's a maze monster, so unless you invest in him, you're not going to get him to rank 3, rank 4, rank 5. So that's the bad thing about him. I do want to get an opportunity to res. So let's bring our legendaries back in here, and let's see if we get a chance to res. Um, we'll do, yeah, we'll do this, and you know what, since I'm using armor and worm lad, just to showcase that other revival skill, let's see if we get a chance to use it. Um, I think we'll get rid of little succubus, and revive, good, all right. We'll see. Actually, armor. Maybe I can make him tanky and he'd be hard to take down like that. But no. Okay. So, yeah. We'll showcase this. We'll test this out. Um, let me go even faster, though, in case I need to res. I um, you know what? We will do the life rune as well. All right. Let's see this in action. So, this will be my last battle. I think I dropped enough trophies for this video. Um, fight. Yes, I am ready. And let's see what I can do. So, we're doing Tremor Bomb Beta. See, this is, this is more or less the meta. Um, you do have a deny monster, you do have a megatons, and then you do have an attacker. Um, I think this can work out too. So, oh cool, I get to showcase again. So, this is what you're going to run into. Mud Realm, right off the bat. It means a control, he can't remove. So, look, mega stun block. Like, yeah, Armor Claw has a status caster, but even then, um, the fact that I can counter like that is pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, Armor cannot really kill Bombada that good, because if my save Rossi is an AoE light-based attack, and he's light. Worming Light, that's the cleansing skill. Um, never enough to remove. Soul of the Apprentice again. Normally, I would be able to remove Megaton, and then I'd be able to attack whoever I want. In this case, we want to see the Resurrection in action. So let's see if I get a chance for that. So hopefully they kill my Armor Claw. I was hoping to fight a Vanos, and they kill Wormlad. Um, let's see. Whip of Cheese, Stun Block. All right. Well, not on my monster. I went too fast here. We'll Restore the Dream. Um, what, what do I even do? I can't. I'm all support right now. So do not. Yeah, the bad thing about running both Resurrection skills is that um, if your monsters aren't dead, you really can't do anything. You're just standing there. That's why I just like one resurrection skill. I don't really think you need both resurrection skills. And here I can just showcase never enough. Like literally on a one turn cooldown, you can use this every other turn. That is pretty awesome considering how fast you are. All right. Can you attack me, please? Finish me off, Hardy. You're supposed to be strong. Come on, Cosmic. Finish me off. Do your blast skill. All right. I'll leave armor alone. So armor can actually die. So I'm going to stop doing stuff with armor. Um, we are gonna mud realm. I really wanted to showcase it, but nah, it's fine. All right, let's times for this blinding punch. Um, toxic roots, poison. Yeah, I really want to cleanse. You don't know how badly I want to cleanse. You don't know how badly I want to cleanse. All right, we'll just recharge. All right, shine of the bulb. Um, but then I'm gonna die. All right, earth. There it is. All right, so he dies. Um, we are gonna see if they go after armor. I hope they go after armor. I'm gonna block 50%. All right, Solar Flare, Sapling. Um, I could revive, but I don't want to revive again. We're trying to showcase the Resurrection, so let's do Never Enough. All right, come on, attack. Why are you attacking me? Don't attack me. Blinding Punch, Whip of the Trees. 
All right, Toxic Roots. So many dots right now. Can I restore? Yes, I can. Having two monsters I can cleanse. Super valuable. Uh, Mud Realm again. All right, there it is. All right, died. I resurrected once. All right, Earth Sprout, Solar Flare. I just need one more attack on me. Cleansing. So much cleansing. Toxic Roots. Um, do I need it? Yeah, sure. Restore the Dream. All right. Oh, AoE. Curse. All right. Um, recharge. Blinding Punch. All right, cool. So... Uh, let's do it. This is gonna hurt me, but Soul of the Apprentice, Sunburning Curse. Yeah, see, the churn order is the, the, the thing I don't like. Like, how does it affect the churn order? That's the one thing that's always gotten me. I resurrected my monster, but then, like, the churn order just completely, like, if, if Worm that had gotten a guaranteed churn, that would have been awesome, but nope. So, yeah, I'm not a biggest fan of the extra turn revival scale, but the single revival, I think that's worth it. And other than that, his skill set is super supportive, so super awesome. Overall, I really like the monster. And honestly, the monster design has grown on me. I like the little baby ghost kadamas all over him, so that's pretty awesome. So with that being said, guys, that is going to be it for my exclusive first look at the brand new monster, Rotten. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about this monster? Is this a monster you can see being really, really good? I didn't realize he has tattoos on his arms. That's cool. Yeah, any and all thoughts, let me know about Rotten. Again, huge thanks to Social Point for giving me the chance to make this exclusive first look. And I will see you all next time. Remember to subscribe.